and welcome to another episode of United Technologies presents Transforming Cities, Transforming India in partnership with CNBC TV18 and MoneyControl.com. Last week, we spoke about the need of vertical growth of cities and how mixed-use development is the best way ahead. This week, we're looking at another important facet of urbanization in India, the importance of fire safety and electronic security. We meet Satish Dhairi and Gotham Day of DLF, who tell us how the real estate developer is using technology to make the lives of citizens safer and more secure. Then, with an estimated 40 million people expected to pass through the new Terminal 2 of the Mumbai airport every year, Chimpan Shukla, the Assistant Vice President for Planning and Design for the Mumbai International Airport, tells us how they are ready to handle this influx, while the President of United Technologies Industrial and Building Solutions India, Gaurang Pandya, discusses the importance of technology in the safety and security space. Plus, Rajan Lutra, the president of the Fire and Security Association of India, talks to us about what lies ahead for the fire and security industry in the country. The National Commission on Population under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India stated that the population density of India as per the 2011 census data had gone up to 382 persons per square kilometre from 325 people in 2001. Now this number on its own doesn't sound too daunting. But take into account the fact that India accounts for a meager 2.4% of the world's surface area while supporting 17.5% of the world population and things start to get worrisome. Plus, major metros in India have a population density of over 20,000 people per square kilometre. While overcrowding and shortage of resources are some major concerns, fire safety and security of the developments are at times overlooked. With more people living in close proximity, chances of fires breaking out and spreading quickly increases many fold. Similarly, securing one's premises also becomes a key concern. As regards the fire safety is concerned, I think in this country, uh, the fire safety takes the uh, last seat in the, in the row, you know. Because the priority is not so much on fire safety. People may spend thousands and crores of rupees, you know, on the interior of the building. But when it comes to the safety part of it, if they have to spend about 10% of the total cost of the project on the safety, they would like to shirk from there, you know, and they will look for a shorter cut, you know. But I think DLF has not done that way. DLS is making sure that we provide every sort of aspect to make sure that we are in a position to handle any sort of a situation. Now, what exactly is required that right from the planning stage of the building, the fire protection has to be incorporated in the building plan from the drawing board of the architect, you know, and not later on, you know. It's not like that, that you buy a suit first and then you start looking for a gentleman who can fit into it, you know. So I think public awareness and public education is very, very important because we have copied the culture of high-rise building from the European countries, but we do not have the culture of living safely in a high-rise building. DLF has applied high standards and used technology to improve the security and safety of their buildings, those that are under construction as well as already built. So while security guards do man their buildings, extensive use of CCTVs is helping them provide a safe and secure environment to their residents. In addition to uh, physical security, we have deployed various uh, QRT, quick response team, and we have a full-fledged access control system in our building. In addition to that, we have electronic surveillance uh, through uh, closed-circuit cameras. Again, we have uh, multi-layer control. One is in the building control, which is uh, the signal is going to the building of, uh, of from all the cameras. And those cameras are also remotely being monitored in the central command center. So there is no chance of any, any escape, you know, everything is being uh, monitored in a proactive way, not in the recording way. Uh, it, is, it is being taken care of uh, uh, by uh, 24 into 7 surveillance team. For ensuring high levels of safety at their Gurgaon properties, DLF has been awarded the Sword of Honor by the British Safety Council. DLF is also the first Indian real estate developer to apply for patents for fire safety technologies. We have uh, approached British Safety Council, who are the toughest certification agency in the world, who had checked our each and every building of Gurgaon buildings, 
and uh, there are 66 parameters which they have checked in, uh, in the, with respect to safety of the buildings. And uh, finally, we are the world's number one or rather the first real estate company who has got five star certification from the British Safety Council for our all um, Gurgaon buildings. And followed by, and then we have stopped, uh, we are not stopped there. We have gone for further uh, benchmarking, which is the best of the best certification that is sold of honor, which we have received uh, in the month of November from London, from British Safety Council. We are the first one to apply for this patent, you know. And uh, in these five patents, number one, we have gone in for uh, electrical cables barrier, you know. Let's say the fire is broken out in one particular electrical cable bunch, you know. And if you do not have any barrier to stop it, it will keep on spreading in the entire area. To stop that, we have done it after every 10 meters. We have developed a new technology by virtue of which we call it a fire, bar fire uh, breaking barrier, you know. So once the fire has reached to that particular barrier, it stops and dies down automatically. The other patents filed by DLF have been to develop a sealant to prevent spread of fire in under construction projects. In the area where diesel generator sets are kept, chilled water used in AC cooling plants to be used for firefighting purposes and also for battery storage protection to ensure early detection and isolating any fire that breaks out in the UPS storage space. But what lies ahead? How can we ensure that these two important concerns are addressed in future developments? Most of our cities are not planned city, you know. But when you make a new city, you plan as per the master plan requirement, you know. And when you have all this planning done in advance, then you also plan for a fire protection system and, in, and the security system in advance, you know. And the fire station, where it will be provided because the international standard for response to the urban city is almost about within three minutes after the fire call has been given, the fire engine should be on your doorstep to take care of the firefighting. You know. But in India, it is not so, so far, you know. So you have to make sure that all these systems are incorporated. Every nook and corner of the smart city is accessible for the fire engines within about three minutes time. And the electronic security is in force to make sure that everything is under uh, review and surveillance by the authorities. On that note, it's time for a short break. On the other side, we meet the Assistant Vice President for Planning and Design of the Mumbai International Airport, Chintan Shukla, who tells us how the new Terminal 2 at Mumbai Airport is using technology to keep its visitors and premises safe and secure. Building awareness, not just about the availability of technology uh, tools to try and detect fire from happening or try and uh, let's say, uh, react when something happens, a security or a fire incident happens. I think the bigger issue is more of uh, compliance at all levels. Uh, the builder needs to comply with the guidelines and the specifications. The architect needs to make sure that adequate uh, fire safety measures or the uh, project team needs to get those measures implemented at the project stage. But I think even post that, even the housing societies, the corporate uh, bodies that operate uh, these uh, buildings, uh, they need to ensure that they carry out not just the uh, frequent uh, audits and tests of what measures are in place, but they need to make sure they carry out adequate number of mock drills. Uh, that is extremely important to make sure that not just the uh, technology works, but technology combined with the processes and the systems and the people are all aware of what they need to do in, uh, in such a case. Welcome back to United Technologies presents Transforming Cities, Transforming India. Mumbai's latest landmark, the state-of-the-art Terminal 2, is fed over 1,400 acres. Built at a cost of over 12,500 crore rupees, this new terminal is projected to handle over 40 million passengers annually. We meet Chintan Shukla, the Assistant Vice President for Planning and Design of the Mumbai International Airport, who tells us that while design is integral for an airport, security is paramount. As far as security is concerned, in past few decades, it has, security has become a bigger concern, especially in airport environment. Mumbai Airport being located right in the center of the city, and with encroachments around the complete uh, uh, boundary wall. It has to deal with better security 
features to enable zero threat. In the process, we have implemented perimeter security into intrusion detection systems and analytical systems and this has enabled much higher security in the airport. There is no area of this airport which is not covered through security. The new terminal has 2300 CCTV cameras for passenger safety and 4100 public address speakers which cover the four story airport terminal building. But how difficult is it to monitor these CCTVs? Even though the number of cameras and, and public address system sounds big, the technology employed and the way it is managed makes it very efficient and easy to manage. The technology deployed with video analytical logic, it generates automatic alarm and it will call for attention with video pop-ups on the screen. So the security in charge will focus his attention on areas where any intrusion would happen. More than the systems installed, it is critical that these systems talk to each other and share information so that the correct decision can be taken in the unfortunate occurrence of an emergency. Systems deployed are not standalone systems. For example, fire, fire systems or air conditioning or CCTV. These are all integrated and they act automatically in case of any uh, any uh, accident and and just for example if there is a fire in one zone immediately the signals will be sent and and the the sequence will happen on its own the the zone will get isolated the the staircase ventilation will be switched on the air conditioning will be switched off a, a air handling units and and the the announcement Emergency announcements will be switch, will be on. Also, uh, lifts will go on fire mode, fire safety mode. So all these occurs simultaneously, without much of uh, manual uh, interference. And this is what uh, smart buildings are made up of. It's time for a short break here on transforming cities, transforming India. On the other side, CNBC TV 18 Sumit Lakutia is in conversation with the president of United Technologies Building and Industrial System for India, Gorang Pandya, about the importance of fire safety and electronic security and how it is very often not given its due in India. Stay tuned. Globally, there is a concept called the Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design, CPTED. Uh, this came about more than four decades ago and has been adopted uh, across the board in most of the Western world. Uh, Indian urban planners and uh, let's say even developers are only starting to now adopt it at the design stage because this concept actually helps you uh, build in basic measures that uh, prevent crimes from taking place in the first place. So they are able to deter uh, a, a, an offender even before he commits a crime. This is like, for example, making sure adequate lighting is there, that your area, the walkways are facing where people, uh, it's not isolated in any way. Uh, that is uh, something I would like to see uh, much wider adoption within the industry. Welcome back. You're watching United Technologies presents Transforming Cities, Transforming India. As we talk about fire safety and electronic security in urban India, Sumit Lakutia is in conversation with the President of United Technologies Building and Industrial Systems for India, Gorang Pandya, about the safety and security space in the country. Needs in the cities are changing from when we were horizontal sprawl to now we're becoming a vertical cities all around. How are the uh, fire safety and electronic uh, security norms changing, the needs of these things, how are they changing now? So it, I think it's very interesting because I think uh, as we go more vertical, uh, I think the need is going to continue to grow across the organization. Uh, you know, we've talked about 100 smart cities. We've talked about different buildings coming up. We're talking about the 
tallest residential tower in the world, tallest commercial towers in the world. Uh, the question comes down to do we have the infrastructure to be able to cater to these or not. We talk about high class airports uh, and systems across and, and, and what kind of security systems you put in place, what kind of fire systems you put in place. The interesting thing is, you know, the market is so nascent at the moment in India that we still talk about fire and security in one world. Yeah. Uh, and they're very different su subjects uh, in, in, in itself. When you talk about fire, immediately people think of, you know, maybe a matchstick being lit or something, wood catching fire. That's like the basic thing. But in urban cities, in urban centers, that's not where usually fires start. Usually fires start from short circuits. How are um, these fire sensors being tuned to be aware and recognize that short circuit would be a major cause of fire? So I think the interesting thing is from a technology standpoint, uh, I'd say it doesn't matter which part of the world you're in. Mm -hmm. From a fire safety perspective, the technologies are pretty much the same. You have a base technology and you can add to that in terms of taking it to an enterprise level system mm -hmm. or be actually focusing on a one unit system mm -hmm. as such. So I don't think that technology plays a big role from that perspective. Where it does fit in is really on the cost piece in terms of having, making sure it's affordable to a larger mass uh, because people still don't believe it's a necessity. Mm. It's, uh, it's a nice to have yeah. rather than being a necessity. But at the same time, I think when you start looking at these facilities, there's a lot of technology already available that can give us that benefit in terms of securing complete facilities, not in one location, across multiple locations. So what you can actually do is scale down an actual manpower usage in those, become more productive. Uh, that's not an issue for us, but it makes it more productive. It, then it, you're not relying on individuals. You're relying on a very sophisticated system to be able to protect you. Uh, and it's backed up by the individuals who are actually manning them, who are going to come back and secure you when there is an issue. Gaurang, we are here in Hyderabad at uh, UTC's Research and Design Center. But are these products, is this technology, is it exactly what's being used abroad in the developed country or are we t tweaking it? Are we developing India-centric, India-specific uh, technologies here? This design center, I mean, from an overall perspective, we've got a close to 300 people here. Mm. We are focusing on global technology, right. right? I mean, they build out global technologies for it doesn't matter where it's going in. Uh, they're actually working on a bunch of things out of this here or this facility. But at the same time, we do have programs specific to different countries. So we do have programs running for India mm. within the design center and those programs could be focused on various things. When you talk about surveillance, I'll, I won't go that broad. I'll say to for <clears throat> a layman's house or somebody's company, somebody's office. We've got that technology in place where one can use its smartphone and um, see what's happening remotely. But the concern always is that security, that privacy, that data security, you could say. Right. I mean, what's stopping XYZ to hack into that network, right. to, into that system and see me? Absolutely. How do we... Uh, put those worries at rest. Corporations like us who have access globally, uh, we've done multiple, you know, uh, sites like this globally. I mean, we have very sophisticated monitoring centers in Hong Kong, in Australia, across the globe uh, that do multiple and thousands and thousands of lines that actually come in and we monitor them in one location. Now, all that is is obviously secured. We make sure there's no access internally, externally, and frankly, can be managed in, in various ways. It could be a simple line that's actually dialing in. It could be a cloud-based system that's actually managing you know, the overall portfolio and the security. When you start looking at the smaller office space, and I, I, let's talk about retail yeah, okay, yeah, in yeah. India. Retail in India is going to continue to grow out. Mm. And I think there, there is a huge requirement for us to have security systems in place, mm. uh, which can actually manage mm. multiple stores, multiple locations across the country, and you can use technology to do it. Okay. You can have monitoring center, have lines come in, you can do video monitoring, access systems, time management, HR, a whole bunch of host of services that you can actually provide. And you could bring the cost down because you do it on cloud. You could do it on cloud. Everybody doesn't have to invest in all the assets in their location. You can invest centrally and you can pay a service charge every month to be able to access that so, service. So what do the next five, ten years look like for fire safety and electronic security uh, space in India? What's, what's Gaurang Pandya's? <laughs> well, I, I think uh, I need a crystal ball to be able to come <laughs> back with that. But if I you know, go by some McKinsey studies and we mm -hmm. talk about some other data that's been you know, looked at over the last few years, uh, I think a few years back there was some McKinsey study around actual spend, mm -hmm. per capita spend on, uh, on, on uh, yeah. fire safety and security. And I think uh, 
uh, you know, in countries like uh, uh, China or some of the other developed worlds, it was you know six, seven, eight dollars, mm. uh, you know, uh, per capita that's actually spent mm -hmm. uh, on this mm. area. In India, I think it's still around ninety cents, or was ninety cents, maybe it's right. a, a buck and a bit more at the moment. So I think the growth and the opportunity in the industry is immense. It's it's mm. huge. Uh, I think what we got to figure out is how do you make it more affordable? How do you make people understand the responsibility that we have mm -hmm. in being, you know, keeping people safe mm -hmm. in a country with 1.2 billion people and growing mm -hmm. uh, at a pretty at a pretty rapid pace? Uh, because it is our responsibility as human beings and as industry as, as corporates mm -hmm. to make sure that we are we educating people, education, educating governments, mm -hmm. industries, mm -hmm. corporates to be able to do the right thing uh, up front. Obviously, it makes business sense also through right. the whole process. Awareness about the importance of fire safety and the use of technology to secure premises is growing. And in the years to come, we can expect a larger implementation of these systems in urban India. That's all on this episode of Transforming Cities, Transforming India. Tune in next week as we take a look at the cold chain infrastructure in the country and the important role that it will play in the country's growth and development. From the entire team, many thanks for watching. There is nothing called a smart city if it is not a safe and a secure city. I think that will lead to a huge uh, uh, upscaling in the growth of the industry. Uh, there have been various industry reports that have given uh, different kind of figures. Uh, my personal estimates are that uh, the fire safety and protection, uh, both active and passive uh, industry, uh, will be something to the tune of maybe about 35 to 40,000 crores. And the electronic security industry will be something in the region of about uh, 8 to 10,000 10, crores by 2020.